Hey, everybody. Happy Monday morning. I am so excited to be in season four of V Speaks Conversations with Heart and Soul and more excited because I am going to be introducing and speaking with Jordan Staggs, who's the editor of V Magazine and also hosts and helms v, the V Book Club podcast, which launched um, last season. Um, so Jordan, Stags, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. My friend who we've been together for 11 years. 13 if you count okay. internship. Okay, 13 if you, <laughs> yeah. that is a long time. Many marriages don't last 13 <laughs> years. That's pretty great. Yeah. And uh, let's just give the audience a little context about the whole backstory of how we even started the podcast. Mm -hmm. And that is that V Magazine is celebrating it its 16th year, yeah. and we have our most recent issue, the entrepreneur issue, with the Bostics on the cover, um, movers and shakers, a power couple who are ruling the airwaves on their own podcast, him and her, and all that they have going on, and we are honored that they were on the cover, and that was a big feat mm -hmm. that um, they are on our cover, and a lot of people are really digging this whole new um, podcast ecosystem. And we started V Speaks three years ago, and that was during the pandemic. And the genesis of us starting that was we were trying to stay relevant and alive and visible in a world that we didn't know what the world was going to turn into, if people were still going to want to read the magazine, buy the ads in the magazine. And so we had to continue our layer of, of building our brand layer by layer, brick by brick to mm -hmm. create our own ecosystem. And so V Speaks is in its third year and now you are uh, launched yours five yes. or six podcasts yes. last month. And we talked about it for about a year, maybe longer, right? Mm -hmm. Of this <laughs> thing called the V Book Club and you helming it. And I know we're always really busy and always behind the eight ball and always thinking of new things. So when it's not front and center and you talk about something that sounds like possibly outrageous due to time deficits, a few times I think you would look at me like, oh my gosh, you're crazy. Why are you talking about the V book club? <laughs> <laughs> That's just maybe how I looked at it. But anyway, when you finally did um, agree to jump on and um, basically sit behind um, the mic and take it as the consummate wordsmith, storyteller, um, avid book reader, and, and a phenomenal editor of all things V and all things The Idea Boutique, which is our publisher, mm -hmm. and that is um, who now is into book publishing. So we'll get to that in a minute. But uh, tell me about how it felt to helm your podcast. Uh -huh. Well, I know you had to like pull my teeth out to get me to do it in the first place. But like you said, it's a whole layer of building this brand that's been around for 16 years and it all hinges on stories with heart and soul. I mean, that's what it's always been. So it was just another way to take these things that we're already doing and people that we've been interviewing, authors and different types of storytellers around the world and do it in this medium where you get to listen and talk and have a conversation. And it's kind of like, I treated it as, you know, I, I interview people for our articles all the time and it's more like, okay, people can just be in the room while, while I'm doing those interviews that might turn into a written article afterwards. And it might've already been one. So, um, it was just really cool to get to continue telling stories and hearing other people tell their stories and just share them with our audience. Um, very well said, as always, <laughs> Jay Staggs, for sure. Um, you know what I find about um, articles? Obviously, I love the printed magazine, mm -hmm. and we all love the printed magazine and don't ever want to see that go away. Um, but we can't forsake the digital marketplace or else we would not remain in business. Right. The one thing that is my takeaway on podcasts regarding the storytelling aspect that you mentioned is no matter how beautifully written something is on the pages of the magazine, and it is, 
when you get to hear someone's voice, mm -hmm. when you get to hear different stories that you were not able to fit in the magazine or the people were not uh, giving you that information because they feel comfortable in a different medium, I think it really does extend the storytelling of mm -hmm. the pages, you know, and it's just a, a, like, you know, we're saying a completely different layer. That said, why don't you tell us from, I thought, it was the coup of all coups for you to interview our cover guy, the photographer. Uh -huh. um, David Yarrow. David Yarrow, uh -huh. who was on our cover, which is just, an, he's a one of the leading photographers in the world. Yes. And he um, published the most beautiful um, tome mm -hmm. of his work that is very heavy that you... <laughs> bought me it a copy of and gifted to me, which proudly um, is on our coffee table um, at home. And we're all into coffee table books because we're going to get yes. into that next because now, as, we, you, can see. as you can see, <laughs> because we've published, the Idea Boutique has published um, seven of them in the last um, several years. So what did that feel like mm -hmm. to finally get David Yarrow on our cover, then beautifully presented in the magazine with our fab design team that um, put that storytelling together and graphically told that story. Then to meet him mm -hmm. um, for your Zoom podcast. Tell me about that. Yeah, it was really exciting. I've liked his work for a really long time. And we've actually had some of his photos on the back of B in the past because he's worked with huge brands like uh, Tag Heuer and um, I think some other, maybe Rolex, Rolex. Mm -hmm. and um, had some really cool commercial shoots that ended up in their ads on V and we didn't even know at the time, that he was I think that he was the photographer. Mm -hmm. Um, and I've, I really love how he works with animals and I'm a huge wolf lover and he works with wolves a lot. So I was all excited to show some of those. And one of them on the cover is this, the really cool vintage Ferrari, uh, with the girl and the wolf in it. And so it was just like, okay, what story is that telling? And mm -hmm. to get to hear him give you the process behind, okay, this is what I wanted to say. This is how we set it all up. Um, like you said, it's something that you don't get when you're putting it in the printed magazine. People are going to look at the photos and they love it and they might read the caption that has the story behind it and they might not. Um, but get getting to hear him tell his process in the back, person. The backstory, yeah. almost the behind the scenes mm -hmm. um, part of the interview too. <clears throat> One of the things that I thought was really funny about what he said on your podcast was that um, the book didn't make any money. Mm -hmm. It cost him a tremendous <laughs> amount of money. And I can relate to how much book books cost. Um, book publishing is a whole different game, mm -hmm. um, higher level game than even magazines, which is a tough business as well. But um, he's, I can't exactly remember what he said, so correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't it like he had to do it because he's cataloging his work and he uses it as a marketing vehicle. Is that what he said? Yes. I okay. think this this one in particular <clears throat> was called Storytelling, and it was just a huge catalog of his work from over the years with the backstory of each photo. So that was really cool. Um, I think it's his fifth or sixth coffee table book. <laughs> um, and the other ones were a little more, as far as I know, um, focused on one thing. Mm -hmm. This one was like a lot of different things. So mm -hmm. it, was, it was very cool to see like all of his different work in mm -hmm. one in one book. Yeah. And you really knew him. Um, you were very well informed to be able to interview mm -hmm. him. And I was thinking about a conversation that I asked you a couple of weeks ago when I was interviewing somebody here in the, in the podcast um, studio that was a lot younger than I was and um, obviously a different, you know, generation. And mm -hmm. did I ask you, I go, well, do I look like too old to be interviewing this young guy. And so I thought about our conversation uh -huh. and how we had said like, no, but then on the flip side of it, um, I started thinking about you being so young interviewing David too. Mm -hmm. And that's on the flip side of it too. But you yeah. were, um, you totally held your own. And I, and I guess the point I'm trying to make here is, um, I've decided after I asked you that question that like this whole, you know, age thing or ageism, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Like if you're well informed and you can relate to somebody, whether you're younger than them or older than them mm -hmm. and you have synergy and you have um, good things to say and people are interested in the storytelling, 
I don't think it matters. No. Anyway, that's just the end of the story <laughs> that you and I were talking yeah, about last like, week. I'm glad Do you, you agree brought with that, that up? I agree with that. And yeah. I think it's, you know, <clears throat> as long as you respect the person, you like what they're doing and you have a curiosity and want to know more, then yeah. that's all you need, you know? Yeah. And I, and I love that. Um, I love the creative process so much, as you know, and I love that there are multiple um, generations like mm -hmm. here in the office. And I don't think anything creative can remain good and excellent and fluid unless you have new energy and new life. Mm -hmm. um, a more seasoned person who has a lot of wisdom and history behind them, experiences behind them can bring a lot to the table. But if you don't have youth in that creative mix too, you are completely shortchanging yourself uh, for the, the creative process. And you know I love the creative process, so <laughs> I will not do that. But sometimes I'm like, wow, this seems so the, – the, the age gaps seem uh -huh. like so gappy. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's so good though. Yeah. <laughs> Got to have it. Yeah, it's great to have you know <clears throat> different voices and different viewpoints and being – like the you you always said it's for everyone. It's for every the every man. Mm -hmm. Definitely for the every man. And it has always been that way too. So <clears throat> excuse me, I just love being able to and then the other thing I think too over the years that's happened is um a lot of the generations have merged where um maybe I'm not gonna say this right, but there's more of like a collective understanding where we all kind of kind of think the same thing and we're not that mm -hmm. far off from um where we are in life because the older i get the more i think that people of all ages are still very much interested in similar things mm -hmm. and we're not that so far removed as it might have been with like in my parents generation we're like you know right i don't know if that's um social media engagement that is like really fostered a lot of um um, interest, maybe the older generation isn't interested in it, but they know about it uh -huh. because there's like a collective knowledge. You think so? I think so. And I think that goes back to forever. We're all just people. We're all experiencing the same life, you know, together, regardless of how you're going through it. Yeah. But um, that brings me to like a funny point that I like to make about books because I love to read like Jane Austen they're going through the same things that we're going through now. It's like, oh, dating is so hard. Yeah. <laughs> Having unexpected visitors is terrible. And yeah. so it's like, okay, it's just the human experience. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the no condition, the human condition. What year it happened or how old you are. Yeah. So it's, yeah, I think getting to interview a lot of different types of people and um, over the years for the magazine and now the podcast is... It's exciting. It even, like, makes you realize that more. <laughs> yes, totally. And right before the podcast, too, we were talking about, like, it is very hard to work in a publishing house, uh, marketing company. It's very high stress. It's very high deadline, or a deadline oriented to the nth degree. And we could crank out a magazine once a month, mm -hmm. every 30 days. Mm -hmm. And we have to keep the content fresh and alive and breathing and living. Every 30 days is a feat in and of itself. And the other thing... Um, that we've talked about together in the last couple of weeks is now that we've done this so long, you know, it's hard. But then on the flip side, it's been such a great privilege mm -hmm. in that it's opened so many doors for me and for us. Otherwise, that would have never happened had this not been a key to allow us to. Um, we went to London Fashion Week mm -hmm. eight years ago, seven <laughs> years ago. That was like yeah. just unbelievable that we were able to get um, media credentials to get uh -huh. into London Fashion Week was just amazing. We yeah. had done New York Fashion Week for so many years, which was a gas, and, like, we absolutely loved doing that. But to get to go to London was, like... Um, it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. <laughs> that, that was pretty amazing, too. So I'm going to just, like, um, segue back to the beginning a little bit. So when we started making the magazine, uh, the second year into the magazine, a woman came to me, Sister Schubert, mm -hmm. um, of Sister Schubert Rolls fame, if you don't know that. They're sold in uh, supermarkets, you know, with the um, all the different frozen They're breads. Frozen. They're so good. And they are so, <laughs> so good. If you don't know about it, um, Marzetti distributes them. And she started um, making rolls for a church um, bazaar. And, just ha and it consists of eggs, sugar, and flour, and no preservatives. Mm -hmm. And so uh, she was bought out 
for like $40 million, like 12 years ago. They retain her still. She's still the face of the brand. And she saw V Magazine. And she was in a hair salon down here. Okay. And she said, who does this magazine? I love it. I want them to publish a coffee table book for me. Mm -hmm. And so the very first coffee table book that we did, that we named and branded called Cast Your Bread Upon the Waters, was Sister Schubert's cookbook, um, putting this together because she had has a Ukrainian orphanage, had, mm -hmm. um, where she ended up adopting one of the orphans right. there. And she had it for about five years. And this cookbook was created with the proceeds going to the orphanage. Mm -hmm. And so, as you know, I say, how hard can it be <laughs> to make a book? How hard can it be to make a magazine? How hard can it be to make a podcast? And as we know, everything is hard. It's hard. <laughs> It's really hard, but we we wrote the, ghost wrote the book. Yep. We photographed the book, and brought it to market and published it in nine months. And she sold out of all the books in the first year and was wow. able to generate money for the orphanage. And this is 10, 11 years ago, and it was such a an amazing um, an endeavor that she embarked upon and she's an amazing woman and mm -hmm. then we had the very first event at alice beach called change the world fundraiser that we right. named for raising money and for her charity before the book and it was a month after um the stock market crashed in 2008 and we were able to raise a hundred thousand dollars that day mm -hmm. that, that night was impressive that was impressive <laughs> because uh, that was one of those moments in time similar tantamount to the pandemic where oh my gosh is the world stopping yeah i want to get off it's too scary what is going on here and we just keep forging ahead so that story is how we started getting into book publishing mm -hmm. then a couple of years after that we published a book called Facade. And this is a beautiful little book of poetry assembled by um, a wonderful author, William Wade, who was the head of a very large oil company in Texas where 5,000 employees were under him. And he came to us because of the magazine and then seeing mm -hmm. Sister Schubert's book and said, could you publish this book? So. The story of it is um, his son, featured on this cover, um, died when he was 15 of cystic fibrosis. Mm -hmm. And it was terribly um, devastating to William to write this book. He was an agnostic for many years. And when his son died, he was an agnostic too. Uh, uh, he remained that. And then in his journey over 25 years to assemble his own poetry his son's poetry, um, he became a Christian through um, this journey of working out his grief, which was 25 years in the making. And several times when we, we would meet here in the office, you know, we would both be reduced to tears because it was a very emotional endeavor for him to bring forth. Um, his son, he bought his son um, a little, uh, the, one of the first Mac computers. Mm -hmm. And after he passed away, he printed out this poem and it's Facade, which is a brilliant, okay. um, and that's why the book is named Facade. Mm -hmm. So it, in my point of me sort of giving a background on like from whence we came, it's also like, when do you get to share such an intimate moment with somebody, learn about their life, you know, fall in love with them as they're basically you're working together and co-laboring together to bring this together. And so many things that have happened along the road have been exactly that, where we've met so many people and our heart is toward people and giving them a leg up and telling their stories, if that's going to help their business or uh, a grief or mm -hmm. anything um, that they may be going through. So one thing begets another, begets another, and it's been a long journey. And sometimes I've wanted to not do it anymore, as we've talked about. <laughs> like, how long can you do this? And like, what, um, the, well, like, what's it all about, Alfie, you know? <laughs> but what's it all about is, and this is very new to me, and I don't even know if you've heard me say this yet, but it's, um, it's about um, not what you might want to do, 
But if you're serving others and you're doing something good for somebody, and maybe that is the only reason you're supposed to be doing something, that mm -hmm. really should be good enough. Mm -hmm. And that is what I think right now. Yeah. As you know, I change my mind a lot. <laughs> I evolve and I grow and then I regress. And, you know, like the whole thing starts uh -huh. all over again. But anyway, so that just sets up um, a couple of things regarding you. And that is um, you authored the Seaside Style book. So let's talk mm -hmm. about that. So then when we have these books under our belt, then yep. more and more people started coming to us. So I'll let you cue mm -hmm. up how we got um, the project for the okay. Seaside Style. Yeah. Well, I love that you have those two because they're so different. Mm -hmm. And like those being the first two, you've got Sister Schubert. It's a cookbook. It's a coffee table book, memoir. And then you have this book of poetry. And then after that, we did the advice book, um, everything I never learned in school, yes. which is another completely different completely genre. inspirational book. Um, mm -hmm. That was the first one that I worked on mm -hmm. and helped um, edit for Darren Colucci. And then moving into the seaside style is going back a little more to like a memoir, um, but it's this beautiful coffee table book, travel book, um, tells the story of this brand that Daryl and Robert Davis had built um, mm -hmm. that everyone might, not everyone knows, but Many, many people know of the town of Seaside and they have the T-shirts and that was kind of where it all started. Um, working with them over the years as an advertiser and with your history as their um, marketing director when you were first moved down here, mm -hmm. um, I think really just sort of set us up for that project to be the, the perfect ones to help tell that story mm -hmm. and to work with Daryl so closely and, um, you know, having excerpts from her journals in there and <clears throat> talking with Robert about how the brand and the town grew up together and um, the different ways that they did that marketing the the merchants so it's really all about the the stores mm -hmm. of Seaside and how each one of them tells a different story and the same way that we try to tell stories for different people in the magazine they try to grow a town. A town mm -hmm. and the individual businesses that are in that town. So it's really all kind of, it's all storytelling. Yes. Getting it all back to that. So. And that that book was two years in the making. Mm -hmm. So books are time consuming. Mm -hmm. And, you know, going back and forth with manuscripts from both sides and then, you know, finding um, a balance. But as the author of that book, you did a brilliant job with that. Absolutely brilliant. And they love it. You know, our clients love it. And Robert, and, you know, who are Robert and Daryl and the Seaside um, style um, folks as well. And it was a feat to bring mm -hmm. that to market. Mm -hmm. And then we produced two different covers. Just we were testing it out, like which cover would sell, but it was yeah. the same book. And it's a beautiful book as well. Um, so, so much rich storytelling about a 40 year old town in the mm -hmm. making and all that that meant to our area. Yes. To them, their legacy. None of us would be here if Seaside didn't break ground 40 years ago and become a beacon for new urbanism mm -hmm. in our community, which birthed Alice Beach, Rosemary Beach, and Watercolor, Water Sound with St. Joe, and all that you know ended up being here. So it, it, it was a significant um, moment in time. And also, again, uh, it was hard. It was but, hard. And it, it was even hard just to decide what this book was going to be. Like I remember right. we went through yes. several different iterations <clears throat> of um, outlines for it and how we were going to tell that story differently than it had been told before. Mm -hmm. Cause there are multiple architecture books, but this wasn't going to be that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, this was more Daryl's side of the story, the creativity that went into building this town. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. Pretty amazing. <laughs> so go buy that book if you want to know all about it. I mean, and that, listen to Daryl and Robert's These Speaks podcast because they are yes. some of the best ones. I agree. <laughs> I agree because, uh, yeah. And, and again, like hard, but such a privilege that we got to tell that story. Mm -hmm. I mean, and so, you know, again, going back to hard doesn't mean wrong. Hard just means right. hard. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I think about hard and that's my story and I'm definitely going to stick with that one. <laughs> so then we roll into cook. Mm -hmm. Okay. The Can we most talk about home. Oh, home. Oh, let's okay. Just I'll let you set that up. <laughs> so say I'll let uh -huh. I'll cue it up for you to take it from here where it was the pandemic. Yes. Okay. So 
something that I guess we all sort of saw during that, um, during the pandemic was people were so obsessed with their homes and wanting to build this nest that, cause they were going to be there more often. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of them were buying new homes, working on decorating, making it the way they wanted, working with architects and interior designers and realtors. I mean, they really boomed, especially in this area during that time, which was something that we didn't expect, obviously. But it led us to create the home uh, coffee table book, yeah. which was our first like V branded coffee mm -hmm. table book. Yeah. And we worked with architects and interior designers and event planners in the area, different people in the area. Um, to create this beautiful, beautiful tome um, and just all the rich photography that we had from people that we had worked with over the years in the magazine just segued perfectly into making this book that is a celebration of the area where we live mm -hmm. and telling the stories of the people that literally build it from the ground up. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was the first one. And we decided it would be a series because we never just can do like one thing. One thing. Um, that would be so boring. Right, it would be. And I think it was great. Um, so, <laughs> so we went from home to cook because while we were making yeah. home, we were like, well, we need to show more of the cooking. personality of the area. And that mm -hmm. included some restaurants, um, people that had been here. Because, you know, when you you can't have houses and communities without all of that, um, the culture that surrounds it. And so we were like, well, the next the next thing we should do is all the restaurants and the chefs and they're all just so like incredibly good at what they do, which I think it's something that people don't know about this area. It's like, oh, we have the beaches. Right. It's beautiful. But everyone here is just so talented. Mm -hmm. um, world-class architects, mm -hmm. world-class chefs mm -hmm. and artists and people that live here because it's beautiful. But they are yeah. so good at what they do. Um, so that led us to make yeah. Cook. <laughs> and and we know by living here that mm -hmm. our area has culture. Um, many years ago, people said, oh, it's just the beaches mm -hmm. and it doesn't have culture. But to your point of everything that you just said on the heels of that, I feel like we are standard bearers for promoting the culture that is here mm -hmm. through the magazine, Cook and Home and all that. And that's all a perpetuation of we have an amazing community. Um, we live in a town where... Chef Emeril Lagasse, who's known the world over, over, has a restaurant here and know him. And he um, graciously chefed our Julian Lennon um, guest star here mm -hmm. with our V Show home two years ago. Yes. And that was just like a wild, you know, ride too. And, and Julian and, and Emeril are in the book as well. Mm -hmm. Then um, Chef Jim Shirley, who has seven restaurants in our area, who we've all known for a long time. And, and he is a, a, a legacy uh, chef and a, a, has landmark, you know, restaurants here too. Then we're able to promote um, new restaurants to the area. Um, newcomers, I'm going to give a shout out to Asia yeah. <laughs> at 30 Avenue. My friend here is um, David Richard, and he's here in studio. He's going to be on a podcast in a couple of weeks about many different things, Asia mm -hmm. being one of them, but also some other fantastical things that he has going yeah. on in the screenplay writing movie world too. Um, <laughs> so, you know, so much storytelling and we get yes. to meet so many great people. Um you and I did a podcast three years ago. I think you were the second podcast and it was fun and it was scary. And it was like, what are we doing <laughs> with this podcast? And then now three years later with 70 podcasts between the two of us, <clears throat> um, you just, I just can't believe it with, um, you know, um, most of them being done in the last year, mm -hmm. year and a half. And you know, a lot of times I just do things and you know what my um, thought process is, you know, which is crawl, then walk and then run. And mostly I do that because I want to see how good can we be? Are we good at this? Are we good at book publishing? Are we good at podcasts? Are we good at magazines? Because, you know, it's kind of a lot of bravado to just say, I'm going to jump into this. I'm mm -hmm. going to have an, a, a, a publishing arm of the company and not really know like what kind of chops you have right. to do it. And so I think it's the best way to grow and evolve. That same spirit also uh, was very much all over the podcast as well. Had no idea if we could go the distance, mm -hmm. if we had the chops to do this. 
I actually fell in love with doing the podcast because I was in radio and TV in Boston many years ago. And I was on the speech and debate team. And that's what I thought it was going to be. I thought I was going to be a newscaster. I thought I was going to be jumping out of airplanes, covering wars <laughs> and all that, which is actually what I really wanted to do. Obviously, my life didn't take me in that level. But when I um, sat behind the mic for the first time mm -hmm. three years ago, and I remembered those days a long time ago, and I remember how much I loved them. I'm like, wow, this is so cool that God lets me get to do something that I thought I would never do again. But then it led me to be prepared. Yeah. And on the heels of that, I am going to say to you that there is no one more prepared to helm the V Book Club <laughs> than you. Jordan Stacks. Thank you. You're welcome. It has been fun so far. No, it's <laughs> been really fun it. to- I think you're liking it. You're liking it more than I thought you were going to like it. I like it more than I thought I was going to okay. like it. So good. that's good. Um, mm -hmm. And I think you, you know, you've jumped out of many metaphorical airplanes. So <laughs> yes. don't, don't think that you haven't done that. And I've jumped out of two real ones myself. Um, yes. But the being able to tell not just like an author's story, I like that the book club is evolving with different types of storytellers um you know david yarrow's a photographer mm -hmm. he does write a lot too mm -hmm. but um we have you know Susie akola who we've worked with to oh, yes. um, publish her novel and so that's like a different type of book <laughs> janie blue um which, which you know, is a great book we and um edited with her and talked about where this novel is going to go, you know, it might be a, it might be a screenplay at some point. We are doing oh, it's going to be a screenplay, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we've got the audiobook coming out, so lots of different things going on with that, and just getting to talk with the um, Emerald Coast storytellers, who are writers in the area that mm -hmm. formed a community where they do open mic nights every month. Um, we interviewed Cars of Thirty A, which is another coffee table book um, mm -hmm. produced in the area, and. It's like all these vintage cars, which is another which thing is, that yeah, I really like. A, mm -hmm. So I was excited to do that. So it's been really cool to talk with so many different types of people, which mm -hmm. goes back to, you know, kind of, I think what we were talking about at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Of this 13 year journey that we've been on, what's one of the wildest, coolest moments in time for you? One of the wildest, coolest moments in time. Um, there have been many. <laughs> trying to think. Uh, I'll, I'll go with like a more recent one that we got to do. Um, maybe not like wildest, but really cool. Um, getting to go on trips to so many different places and work with so many different people to tell their stories. Um, Kelly, who's our marketing director and assistant editor, and I went to Cabo San Lucas um, in December to cover a music festival there, which seems kind of random probably. That's this big group of songwriters from Nashville that have written so many hits that you would know. And they do this every year. It's called Songwriters in Paradise. And they do one in Cabo. They do two in California, Wine Country. And um, Patrick Davis is at the helm of that. And he just brought this group of basically his friends who are songwriters together. And you get to hang out with them for the weekend. And you meet other people that are there who go to all of these and hear their stories behind the songs. Um, so I get to interview Patrick for, for V Speaks as well. Mm -hmm. And I love like getting to get that backstory from people um, that, you I, know, you might hear, you might hear the song, but you don't know everything that went into it. Right. Yeah. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. And you, you look like it was a magical moment oh, in time for both of you mm -hmm. and for everybody there. And then I think that was, you sat in for me on V Speaks, yes. which I thought that was fun too. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> um, and did an amazing job with that. Obviously, you knew way more about that than I mm -hmm. did. And um, that was how you jumped in. You did that first before you did your first V. I think I did. Yeah. yeah so yeah. that was like, you know, getting your <laughs> it feet wet. It was nerve-wracking. Yeah, it, was it, it, it is. It can be very nerve-wracking. Um, well, in, in wrapping up, anything else that you want to say about your V book clubs? You want to um, have people mm -hmm. send you... Um, pitches. I would love to know what people want to hear from the V book club. I think that reading again, possibly because of the pandemic, like has had yeah. such a spike in the last few years. Mm -hmm. Um, people that I know that were never really big readers before are now like getting into it and they are just devouring so many books, like mm -hmm. constantly Kelly is one of them. And, um, I'm, you know, 
I read, we read so much every day making the magazine, which is very, very cool. But books are another animal and the things that people are gravitating to or the things that are trending with different authors is fascinating to me. <laughs> and I want to know what people want to hear about um, from a book podcast. Like, do you want author interviews or do you want to know reviews of things that we've read, um, things that we want to read or just our thoughts on books in general, older books, like anything. So yeah, I'm like so excited. Your suggestions, I would say um, a dream guest, I think right now for me would be Sarah J. Mass, who's has three like best selling series, all fantasy series that are out. And they're just like everyone I know has has read them and has like just devoured each one after each other and just kind of wanting to know the process behind making a book like that or a different series like that, that all sort of tie together is something I want to explore more. Well, I hope that happens. And I'm, yeah. and I, I'm going to say that I think it will. The other thing I don't know if I was remiss in telling our listeners and viewers is that you are an author that is working on you're working on three different, three different books right <laughs> Who knows? now, right? Yeah, it's okay, but <laughs> many you're, different ones. You're right. You know, obviously, as editor of the magazine, and you have like amazing writing chops. But your your own writing for you know your books, um, World Move Over, Jordan Staggs is going to be a New York Times bestseller herself. You are. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> well, there's so much to say. I mean, we could go on and on, but we're going to have to bid adieu at the moment. Thank you so much, everybody. Check out our social marketing platforms, V Book Club, uh, V Speaks, V Magazine, The Idea Boutique. I mean, how many different handles can yes. we have to spread our <laughs> ecosystem far and wide? And um, Jordan's email address is jordan at vmagazine.com, mm -hmm. V-I-E magazine.com for any of these pitches or ideas that people might want to communicate with you in regards to anything and specifically your V Book Club. Mm -hmm. Yay. Yes, we would love to know what you want to hear on there. So. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Much success, which I know you're going to have. Um, and you do such a good job for our company. Thank you immensely. Oh, thank, thank you for, for being everything. here for 13 years. It's been that's a journey. A, that's a tour of duty. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully more good than bad. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you everyone for listening and watching. I uh, hope you have a wonderful day. And thank you for loving V and um, everything that we have going on. Have a good one. Bye.